Everyone, please stand. Almighty God, we pray for your blessing upon this council. Help and prosper its work for the advancement and benefit of its people, so that peace and happiness, unity and justice may be established amongst us all. Amen. Please be seated. Manningham City Council acknowledges the Wurundjeri people as the traditional custodians of the land we now know as Manningham. We pay our respects to Wurundjeri elders past and pre present and value their ongoing contribution to the cultural heritage of Manningham. Manningham Council would also like to acknowledge the contribution made to Manningham over the years by people of diverse backgrounds and cultures. I'd like to especially welcome all the members of the public who have joined us in person and online to observe tonight's proceedings. I'd like to advise that tonight's meeting is being audio and video recorded. All care will be taken to maintain your privacy. However, as a visitor in the public gallery, your presence may be recorded. By remaining in the gallery, it is assumed that your consent is given in the event that your voice and or image is broadcast by council. As with all council meetings, we are still taking questions from the public and encourage you to submit your questions in accordance with our normal practice. As we transition back to in-person meetings, we'll continue to take questions from members of the public who do not feel comfortable in attending the meetings in person. In these circumstances, our CEO will read out the questions. A response will be provided where we have the information at hand. If we're unable to provide a meaningful response, we will take your question on notice and provide a response in writing. We'll deal with a maximum of two questions per person and two questions on any one issue. If you have more than two questions, please submit these additional questions in writing through the normal um, channels. Apologies and requests for leave of absence. There are no apologies. Prior notification of conflict of interest. There are no prior notifications of conflict of interest. Councillors, would anyone like to give notice of a conflict of interest now? No? Thank you. Public question time. We've received a number of questions for tonight's meeting. Our first questions are from Ms. Hel Helen Jersevich, OAM. Helen, would you like to come to the microphone up the front there? Good evening, Helen. Thank you, you can Mayor. make some introductory statement and then um, go on with your question, if you like. As Council has advised that it is debt free, we learn that apart from assets toting millions, if not billions, of dollars, Council also has $65 million in its bank account. Council acknowledges isolation and loneliness is a critical issue. Two neighbouring councils have seven community buses, each in their fleets. My question is, why on several occasions, the last being at the Community Vision 2040 Forum, are we told that there's no money to purchase community buses which would assist in con connecting isolated and lonely community members to Council's community event initiatives? Council stages events endeavouring to connect the community and so community transportation would assist in solving the isolation and loneliness issue to get to these events. My second question is, where do Council's priorities lie with regards to community connectedness? Are there priorities at the high end of the scale, therefore critical issues acted upon in urgent matters? Thank you. Thank you, Helen. Sorry, Ms. Jesevich. <laughs> Thank you for your questions and as these questions relate to the connecting communities and transportation, I will ask Mr. Angelo Corumbas, Director of City Planning and Community, to please respond. Uh, thank you, Mayor, through you. Um, thanks for your questions, Helen. Um, in response to your first question, I just uh, probably two points I'd like to make. But firstly, I just want to reinforce that Council is very much aware um, that transport is a critical uh, and very important issue across the whole community and that we need far better public transport services. 
So the two points, I suppose, in response to your question. Firstly, um, later this year, officers are going to be reviewing our integrated transport plan that guides our advocacy to the state government on public transport provision around the, the whole city. So um, as you would appreciate, public transport is primarily a responsibility of the state government. But with our integrated transport plan, we will, um, this will enable us to suggest improvements and to advocate uh, for any changes that um, uh, we can to improve the, the network for the benefit of all. And you're right, Council currently has three community transport buses that serve older uh, residents to assist them to get to um, activity centres for shopping um, and effectively you know, support them to lead in, in independent lives as much as possible. So we do that now. The service caters for those that have been assessed as being the most in need, the greatest need. Um, and again, we're going to be reviewing, officers are going to be reviewing this service, our community transport service and that bus service um, later on in this year. And we'll be coming back to council with um, considerations, um, or some recommendations for council's consideration on, on how that service could possibly be improved or not. So that work's going to happen this year as well. Um, in response to your second question, um, in regard to the pro where, do, where do our priorities lie as a council, um, I just wanted to say that you're probably aware that, um, that a connected and an inclusive community is one of the key goals in our council plan, and it certainly came out of the feedback through, the, through that, your panel. Um, and that council, as you would know, delivers a wide range of services and programs to support that goal. Um, so it is, it is a priority for us. And as an example, I just wanted to highlight the work that we've done as a council through the pandemic lockdowns over the last few months, uh, where we saw the community increasingly uh, embracing our local parks and gardens and trails um, and, our, and our activity centres as places to connect and to meet. And the council has invested a lot of resources during this period to actually enable that to happen in a better way, um, not only in our parks and gardens, but in our some of our bigger activity centres through the pop-up parks, which have been successful in some areas, not so in other areas. Um, but that was all about um, encouraging people to to connect um, in a time of you know international crisis, effectively. So we do take. Uh, community connectedness very seriously. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Our next questions are from the Connorsby family, Simon and Janice. If you could come to the microphone for Mr. Sorry, Simon, is it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. Um, I'm speaking for two people, for myself and my mother. She is unable to get to the microphone here. What we are interested in is uh, Masson Square footpath access. So um, Masson Square was originally built for shops and all the businesses was done within the shops. Over time uh, the businesses have sprawled out onto the footpaths and you've got outdoor dining and you've got selling of items such as gardens, plants, fruits and vegetables. We believe that the outdoor dining uh, function is reasonable uh, that uh, people are mainly seated and there's very little traffic between the shop and the, and the patrons. But what we have concerns about is the, uh, like an outdoor market that's forming down towards the pharmacy end, particularly with shop three, five, nine and 11. The footpaths are cluttered, they're inaccessible. I can't get my mother past those shops in the wheelchair. There's groups gathering around those uh, produce uh, baskets there and they sprawl out onto the road as well. So with an elderly population, it, it, there's a very big potential to have an accident there on the footpath or with a car on the road. My mother, just for a little bit of uh, history, has um, already been uh, run over at Bulleen Plaza, causing significant leg injury and lifelong leg injury in the near Bulleen Library. So this is why we're very concerned about what's happening with shop three, five, nine and 11. 
So at the moment there's an upgrade process going through Masson Square and we've written to that as well and uh, put our view forward there. So the first two questions I'm putting forward to are from me and the second two questions are from my mother. So the first question is, in its current form, Masson Square, how will access, for example, in shops 3, 5, 9 and 11, Masson Road be kept clear and safe? Second question is, how will the number of people gathering around the plant and food stalls, for example, in front of shops 3, 5, 9, 11, be controlled to maintain a safe footpath and car parking bay accesses? And my qu mother's questions are, the first one is, with a, the upgrade of Masson Square, has the function of an outdoor market been considered? If so, will the upgrade design allow for an outdoor market area with safe and accessible footpaths and car parking bays? And her second question is, if, if the last question is positive, what consideration in the upgrade design has been allowed for if the current outdoor market type shops don't last, the shops change function in the future and the out, outdoor market is no longer required? Thank you. Thank you, Mr Consby, for your questions. And Mrs Con um, I'll, As it's related to Madison Square, I'll ask again Mr Angelo Corumbus. Director of City Planning Community to please respond. Uh, thanks, Simon, for your questions. I think we met during the North East Link ES yes. process, didn't we? Yes. So good to see you again. Um, through you, Mr Mayor, I'll respond to each of the questions in turn, if that's, if that's OK. Um, so the first question um, about um, how will um, access in front of the shops be kept clear and safe? Um, I just wanted to stress at the outset that footpath trading and activity like that makes a positive contribution to the character and vitality of shopping centres and is generally supported by council. But having said that, um, these activities are required to provide a clear, safe and unobstruct unobstructed access for pedestrians of all abilities and at all times in accordance with council's uh, footpath trading guidelines. And I've got a copy of these guidelines here, so I'm happy to give them to you after this, so you can have a look. The guidelines require the walkway to be at least one and a half metres wide to provide for unobstructed movement of um, pedestrians. And along the kerb, to address the other element that you said about parking and things like that, the guidelines require 600 mils, so any, any display, like the ones you've described, or outdoor dining, to be 600 mils from the back of kerb again to allow for car doors to open or for the overhang of, of cars if, if they're parking uh, straight towards the, car, uh, the footpath. Um, so we control this via our local law permit process, which is an annual assessment process and council officers periodically check to ensure compliance with all those requirements. Um, so we're familiar with the, the area that you have mentioned. Um, um, so as I said, I'm happy to give you a copy of those guidelines and you can have a look, but um, we, we actually do encourage that sort of activity, but it has to, it has to be in accordance. So if, if there's an obstruction, uh, we can certainly take action and make sure that they're complying with, with those distances that I mentioned. In regard to this second question, um, so again, just to reinstate, we do support trading provided it complies with the guidelines. Um, and we don't try, we don't regulate the number of customers unless it starts to cause an amenity or safety issue. So I don't think it's council's role to, to control the number of customers in any particular shop unless it causes a, a serious public risk issue. Um, and as I said, you know, we're aware that, um, that that area is quite popular and that issue has been raised, so I'm more than happy to, uh, to go out and make sure that it, it's compliant with um, the guidelines. Um, the last two questions um, uh, regarding the upgrade of the Macedon Square um, and, and the functions uh, such as an outdoor market, as you described it. So we described that as just outdoor trading, it's just the display of goods outside. Um, in this case, it was a green grocer um, and I think a florist. Um, and have we, um, will the upgrade take those sorts of things into account? In short, your, the answer to the question is yes. The proposed upgrade is currently being reviewed in light of some significant community feedback we've had. 
However, again, pedestrian amenity and safety and improved traffic circulation and car parking and an overall better shopper experience and pedestrian experience for our residents is one of the guiding considerations of the concept plans that we've developed to date. But as I said, we've had a lot of feedback from, from community and traders and we're in the process of reviewing those concepts now. Moving on to your last question, um, uh, which was about would, would the upgrade, um, has, whether that's been allowed uh, for, uh, will the upgrade allow for changes, you're basically asking will it allow for changes to, to the shop activity if the, if the outdoor trading is no longer needed. Um, so as I said earlier, in response to that question, Council does regulate these activities through a local law permit. Um, so we review the permits as circumstances change. So if that shop changes in the future, um, it, the, the permit will lapse. It won't, they won't be able to, to use that uh, outdoor and they'd have to apply for a fresh permit, whoever the new business you know, occupier is, or the new business, whatever type of business that is. So as you can imagine, businesses do change over time and our aim again is to attract, to, to create attractive and vibrant places where people want to be. So the design we're going to try to focus on for the upgrade is to make sure it's an enabling design as much as possible so that if someone wants to use it in the future for display of goods, they can do that. If they want to potentially use it for curbside cafe, they could do that, or if they don't want to do anything, that, that could be um, an option as well. So we try to make it um, as versatile as possible. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Angelo. Our next question is, ne sorry, our next questions are from Mrs. Diane Bannister. Mrs. Bannister. If you could come to the microphone. Good evening. Good evening. Um, my problem is basically parking and green space. It's a major issue around new and redevelopment sites. Street parking is being taken over by residents who are new to the area, who have bought into developments. The average car use in the Manningham area is two and a half cars. Most developments don't provide that amount of parking off the street. So residents are using the garage for extra storage, the street for parking. It's causing obstructions and definitely dangerous driving conditions for other road users. Uh, a little note for you, in Japan, you've got to be able to provide a garage to keep your car in before you're allowed to buy one. As far as the green space is concerned, the lack of free or undeveloped space around any new buildings is reducing our native habitat. It's creating excess water runoff, which is leading to erosion in certain areas. There is no space for outside gatherings. And it's been very obvious lately that being stuck in a little box is not really all that good for your mental health. It doesn't give you the opportunity to meet your neighbours if you're stuck inside. So my questions are, with an average of two and a half cars per dwelling, what provision for parking is required in any new development? Second question, what percentage of green space, and that is not including paving, driveway or decking per lot is required? Thank you. Thank you. Diane. So given that that's again related to planning, I'll uh, ask Angelo to come and answer the questions. Um, thank you, Diane, for your questions and through you, Mayor. Um, in regard to your first question about uh, car parking, so the, man the, planning, the Manningham planning scheme uh, requires one car space for a dwelling with one or two bedrooms, or two car spaces to be provided on site um, for uh, all any dwelling which is three or more bedrooms. So this is this standard 
isn't unique to Manningham. It's actually a statewide standard and council generally can't control that. It's imposed by the state government and it's a standard provision across most of the state. The, in terms of visitor car parking, one visitor car space is required uh, for every five dwellings in a development. So depending on how big, how many units there are, how many dwellings there are, that'll determine how many visitors. So it's one per five. Uh, unless it's along the principal public transport network, which includes things like Doncaster Road and Manningham Road. So again, this is a state-wide pro state provision that we really can't affect. Um, so in, in those areas, um, along the principal public transport network, there is no requirement for visitor car spots. In terms of the um, green space, Again, this is a, a standard in our planning scheme which is consistent across metropolitan Melbourne and is a state government requirement. So we have, you know, we can't easily adjust this. The requirement there is that uh, for um, multi-unit multi developments, the, the standard actually varies depending on the size of the site and, and the zone. So there's different zones across the city from areas that encourage high density development to other areas which, which effectively only encourage uh, low density development. So it depends where you are, but just as a general guide, private open space um, has to be anywhere between 40 or 50 squ uh, square metres per dwelling as a requirement, depending on where it is. In and addition, and ad and addition to that, between 25 to 35 per cent of the land also needs to be designed as garden area. So that might just be, um, you know, like front front setbacks area that add to the character of the neighbourhood as you describe, but not necessarily private sort of usable open space. Um, so there's there's quite um, a variety of different standards depending on where you are, and I'm happy after this meeting to have a further discussion if you have particular sites. I can give you Thank you. Thank you, Angela. And. Thank you, Helen, for your questions. Sorry, Diane, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Diane. Um, so before uh, we move on to our next item, which is for the receipt and re of recommendations from the community panel, can I ask for a motion to permit community panel members Louise Karamaris and Rob Fletcher to address council prior to discussion on this item? Do I have a mover? Thank you, Councillor Goff. And do I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Chen. Uh, I will put that motion. Those in favour? Carried unanimously. Thank you, councillors. And in accordance with sub rule, uh, sorry, actually, I'll, I have to get you to read the motion for Councillor Goff. I just realised. Sorry. <laughs> Would you like someone else to move it? Uh, you found them? I found them. <laughs> right down behind me. Right, you want to, to say... Uh, In accordance with sub rule 62.1. Oh, that. Yes, here we are. Thank you very much. Got my glasses and all the rest, sorry about that. In accordance with sub rule 63.1 of the local governance rules, council resolves to permit the community panel members, Louise Karamas, Karamas and Rob Fletcher to address council prior to consideration of item five, receipt of the recommendations from the community panel. Thank you. And Councillor Chen, I assume you second that motion. Yeah. I'll put that motion, those in favour, and that is carried. Great, so thank you, um, Louise and Rob. If I could get one of you uh, to come to the microphone, perhaps Louise. And uh, yeah, we look forward to hearing about your experiences. So thank you very much, Mayor and councillors and all the citizens of Manningham. Um, I take this opportunity to also pay my respects 
to the First Nations people of the lands that we're on and the waterways that surround and inhabit our beautiful area, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, and I pay my respects to their elders past and present and all the elders that are actually in the room today and each of your ancestors and each of you here today that um, have been carrying um, the vision of Manningham. So I guess my experience of the panel of 40 strong citizens was that it was a really strong participatory process and we came together and we you know, really honoured the values of what I see as the First Nations people, which is about respect and care for each other and community and the land that we're on, but also coming from a place of heart and working in partnership. And there were some fantastic ideas that were generated. And, you know, some of the examples were really around the questions that were actually put to the council tonight. So it was around looking at addressing isolation, particularly amongst our most vulnerable communities, um, our elders, and there were some great ideas that came up with um, looking at supporting ageing in place and also um, looking at small business and the kind of values that we want to nurture around small business. So it was really about looking at businesses that give back to community that are ethically and environmentally sustainable, that are also respectful of the environment. And I guess I was a bit provocative today in bringing Maggie the magpie along to the stage. So to remind each and every one of us around the wildlife that we're here to nurture and protect. And there was a lot of concern around the um, impact of the Northeast Link and what that means, but also more broadly, around how we can protect um, the birds and the native trees and the, the rivers and making sure that they're clean. There was also some fantastic ideas that came to the fore around how we can be, you know, creating neighbourhoods where people are interacting much more with each other. So ideas such as having coffee vans and food vans coming through the, the streets and having street parties and facilitating some of those conversations with our neighbours, recognising that people are coming and going, and also some fantastic ideas around how to support the youth of the area with um, career um, pathways and opportunities and making bridges with, uh, with businesses and people that are retired in the community. I mean, there were some ideas. I know um, hopefully you'll get to read um, the actions that came out of um, our deliberations and incorporate that as part of your planning and we're keen to continue the, the conversation. So I'll hand over to Rob um, who will go into a bit more depth around his personal experience and I thank and each, each and every one of you. Thank you. Thank you very much Louise and thank you for your service to the community. Rob. Uh, hello, good evening. Uh, my name is Rob. I um, just want to say it was a good opportunity to be part of the panel to hear ideas from other people in the community. Um, I'm only 22, but meeting other people as well and hearing across the whole agendas about everything, which was good. Um, there was things, people wanting universities to ice cream trucks in the areas, um, which was pretty interesting. Um, and as well, just acknowledging people's, what they view of ideas in the area. And that's all, thank you. Thanks, Rob. Um, would anyone else from the I, well, well, yeah? Would anyone else from the panel like to speak? Yeah. Would you like to make your way to the microphone? Uh, good evening to everybody. My name is Sam. I'm also I'm in the Doncaster, East Doncaster, living for a long, long time. The Alma is suggestions only is suggestion for you because I have been to many countries. That I have only suggestion that I went with my grandkids to the Doncaster shopping town, and I really didn't find any place that can be that they can be amused of that one. 
I only suggest that if council can do something like a skateboarding or something in that uh, shopping center, it would be very nice for the kids to go over there and spend some good time and playing there. That's all my suggestion. Thank you, Sam. Is there anyone else from the panel who'd like to? Yes. Thank you, Mayor and Council. I'd just like to say it was a very good exercise, very well, uh, well worth exercise to do. And there was a lot of hard work and effort put in by all the people. And if, as I've already suggested to the Mayor, maybe we can revisit it yearly to see how the progress of what we've talked about is going. Because just to do it every four years, you don't want to set it and forget it. So if we could say, do what we've done and then see how it's moved each year. So maybe an annual get together just to see how our progress goes. Thank you. Thank you. And if we could ask that that be minuted. Thanks, governance. Is there anyone else from the community panel? Well, thank you again. Um, so we'll, what we'll do now is receive the recommendations from the community Panel. If I could have a mover for that. Thank you, Councillor Lang. Would you like to move that the recommendation be adopted? Just so I move that the recommendation be adopted. Thank you, Councillor Lang. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Kleinert. Um, Councillor Lang, would you like to speak to the motion? And I'll. Uh, I will get, uh, everyone will have an opportunity to speak to the motion. Yes, thank you. Could I propose that we suspend standing orders on speaker time limits on this motion? I'll, I will put that to the floor. Those in favour? Yes, seconder. Sorry, a seconder. Thank you. <laughs> seconder. I'll take Michelle again and uh, we'll put that to the floor. Thank you. That's carried. So the standing orders are suspended uh, for this item. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, after visiting the community panel after their session, it was clear that they all felt that they, had, that they were tired, but they ha were passionate about the extensive hours that they'd put in, the long days, the thoughtful discussions, and their big, one of their biggest comments was that it was well facilitated in a very professional manner. You can clearly see by the um, community and the representative of um, the residents here from the panel today that friendships were formed, role models were made, and connections between the community panel will be lifelong bonds. So I do support that recommendation, that idea of them being able to catch up, and I um, encourage you guys to do it yourselves anyhow, because. Um, they, um, they have actually made some really good friendships and, and out of that, so that's a real benefit for them. Um, I just want to thank the um, community panel men um, members um, on the hours that it took. I do know that a lot of them said it was quite, um, it was quite a hard slog and that I really thank their members for their dedication, time and passion to the matters of council from their community lens and their public value. So I um, ask that Council adopt the recommendations. Thank you, Councillor Lang. Councillor Quiet. Thank you, well said, Councillor Lang. Um, yes, first of all, I'd like to also extend a thank you to um, Council officers who did an incredible amount of work to put, put this together in um, conjunction with the consultants. and. Uh, it was a wonderful experience to be able to go as a councillor to see um, the initial um, beginning night and then also um, see the end, um, to look at the beginning and the end. And it, it sort of felt very much um, like the, the, the feeling in the room um, of the, the love of Manningham and the place where they live resonated with um, many of us as individual councillors as um, this is why we put up our hand for the role, to take on the role to, to put together a, a council plan to, to govern over the city. And it was so wonderful to see 
um, 40 people, um, having a glimpse and a touch of what we see each and every week um, throughout our journey. And um, it, it, was, it was heartening to see um, a lot of the response and um, the, the thoughtfulness of, of what they feel um, as we looked at it as, as counsellors, as we unscrolled that vision and like little children flocking to see what did they write, what did they write, and very much feeling that um, as, as counsellors being custodians, you know, to this work um, over the next four years that we felt, uh, well, I certainly felt, Mr Mayor, very part of the way that you feel and the vision that you see, uh, you feel that carried through, you know, from Manningham. How we do that is a challenge ahead. Uh, but I think the process has been a really good process because it's very heartening to see there was not a disconnect of, of the community group and us as governing councillors. Um, there was that, that feel of, you know, in, in many parts, such, um, such synergy. Mm -hmm. So it's wonderful to formally receive, receive this. It's not a tick and flick. Um, it is a requirement by the state government for us to do this. Many councils do it in many forms, um, but I'm really pleased the way that we've done it and we've gone about um, it is a learning, it's the first, and certainly um, won't be the last. And I certainly do love that idea that it gets revisited every year, that this group can come back and look and check in. And I think for, for us as councillors that take our role very seriously, um, it's a great point for us to, to check in because it is the most important document that we put together as a council is the council plan. Mm. And, um, and it comes with uh, that desire to fulfil um, the wishes of our community at large, knowing that that comes with its challenges in, in itself. And we do have challenges coming up in the next four years, um, you know, the North East Link being one of them and, and, and many things. But um, I've seen it as a very positive thing and I'm, I'm really grateful. I'm, I'm really um, I'm heartened that we were able to do it this way formally. I think it's really important and it shows our respect back to those that have given their time um, to each and every one. And, um, like Councillor Lang said, it's wonderful to see that connection that was that was brought about through our Manningham, because this is our community. This was a snapshot, um, as I say, a pizza of of the collection of, of Manningham right across from the city end to the, the country end, from the youth to the wise. Um, it was beautiful to see um, our city represented that way um, through this. So thank you um, through you, Mr Mayor. Um, to those that, that attended and gave their time um, very seriously, very diligently and very committed that they did. They stayed on for the course, which really showed that commitment to the city as a whole, which um, is, is heartening. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kleinert. Would anyone else like to speak to the motion? Councillor Diamante. Thank you, Mr Mayor. So I'll only be brief. It's important for us all, we all recognise the community elected us. Um, the community pays for us. I think it's quite arrogant to think that it's a, our council plan. It's not. It's your council plan. It's the community's council plan. So it's tremendous to have the community input. I very much like the idea of an annual review because it, it keeps us accountable against those recommendations. And accountability is really important because, again, it's, it's your plan. It's your money that we're using. So we need to be very, very aware of that, and we are very aware of that. Um, I too want to thank the officers for the huge amount of work that you've done in, in not just doing it so well, but doing it so quickly. And um, the community, you might like to know that Manningham's the envy of many, many local government areas that have said to, said to me, wow, Manningham's done it so quickly and done it so well, and, and we're watching how you're doing it. So that's a congratulations to the, to the officers and to the community as well. So. So thank you, and, and I too support the motion. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Diamante. Would anyone else like to speak to the motion? Councillor Laura Mayen. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I'd just like to say that I think this was a great initiative taken by Manningham and all other councils, and that community engagement is really important in ensuring that both council and the community are united in doing what is best for the community, which is the goal of both our council and every council. Um, the two key takeaways I had from this group was that, one, it was really diverse. There was a range of ages, backgrounds, cultures, different areas of Manningham. So it really ensured that we got the experiences and perspectives of all members of our municipality. 
And also, um, as previously stated, I believe was there was no dropouts, which one wasn't expected by officers, and two wasn't the case for other other councils. So I think it does show that our community does really care about where they live. Um, and I'd also like to say that it was encouraging to see that what the community said did align with what the council believes, and that the community vision that Council is a peaceful, inclusive and safe community that we celebrate our diverse culture, wildlife and natural environment and that we are resilient and value the sustainable and healthy living, a sense of belonging and respect for one another, all align with what this council has been talking about, about being inclusive, about protecting our environment and about supporting every resident. So I'd just like to say thanks to everyone involved. Thank you, Councillor Laura Main. Does anyone else like to speak to it? Councillor Lightbody. Yep. I don't have much else to add because everyone's really covered it, but I think every one of the applicants should be really proud of what they've done. I mean, we're one of the first, we are one of the first councils to, fin to finish this process. And with over 300 applicants and the 50 that were selected, their commitment to the long process, no one, as Laura said and everyone else said, no one's dropped out. And I think through the recommendations that have been made in that discussion, the community, with the assistance of our officers as well, has set a really high standard and a really high bar for this sort of process, as it is the first time we've done, I think, the process this in-depth into our strategic documents with the community. The standard that has been set is just really incredible, and hopefully it can be replicated in the future as well. Thank you, Councillor Lightbody. Would anyone else like to speak to the motion? or against it. <laughs> Councillor May. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I would also like to echo many of the comments by my colleagues. Um, it's great to see so many uh, panel members here tonight in person mm. uh, on a cold and windy night in Manningham. I think it's a testament to your enthusiasm for the process. Um, I agree that I think from all the feedback I heard that it was very well facilitated um, and the officers did a great job in providing those deep dive briefings uh, when the inevitable questions were asked, because council is a very complex beast um, and 20 hours is probably not enough to really get your minds around it. Some of us who've been on council for many years are still learning things every day. So uh, to have the officers there answering questions and presenting um, was, uh, was a pivotal part of the process. I love the idea of an annual reunion, uh, similar to this meeting, where panellists can come in, can present, can ask questions, and we can comment on things that we've done uh, to respect some of the recommendations. Um, this is my second community panel uh, sort of engagement. We had one at the City of Melbourne uh, for our 10-year financial plan. And there were a couple of interesting differences. Uh, during that process, uh, the councillors were allowed to observe. Um, the five sunny Saturdays of hearings, uh, which 50 community members contributed to, and councillors were given an opportunity to do some speed dating with tables of 10 panellists to forcefully impose and demand their views be heard. And I think this model of actually excluding councillors in Manningham was probably better, uh, because it, you don't want forceful political lobbying, so please say this and please say that. Uh, and my experience at Melbourne was that the more I argued for something, the less likely they were to put it in there anyway. So uh, probably shouldn't have said anything. Um, uh, I think that um, the no dropouts was surprising and fantastic. Um, I think that good food and good facilities helps with that. So well done to everyone who organised the, the wonderful Baptist Church facility, which I hadn't seen before, which was magnificent, and obviously Mulla Mulla, our, our centrepiece um, uh, highball facility. But I guess finally, um, these recommendations need to be uh, words that we come back to on a regular basis and ask ourselves what can we do to actually honour them and respect them. And just to go through a couple, recommendation one about planning for new developments responsibly. Um, so we do need to protect the green wedge uh, based on recommendation one. And I've had an architect who lives in my ward, Andrew Jeffries, make very forceful representations about we don't have enough vegetation controls in Manningham compared to our neighbours at Whitehorse and Burundurra. And twinning those comments with this recommendation, uh, I think maybe there's a pretty strong case that we look at our vegetation controls and ask whether they can be stronger on the back of this recommendation. And let's see where we get to in a year or two on that. On recommendation two, 
about connectedness. Um, we should be able to do more, you know, $100 vouchers for Christmas street parties. Bring back the Temple Stowe Festival. Maybe do it at Macedon Square instead. Um, all sorts of different policies. Help Helen with her bus, as we heard earlier tonight. Recommendation three on communications and marketing. Well, let's try and resurrect a local paper. Let's make Manningham Matters better and let's do more on Facebook. Um, and uh, a few others like um, recommendation five, connecting core principles of biodiversity and protecting wildlife and all that we do. You know, let's never support a roo cull in Manningham on the back of this recommendation. Uh, let's embrace the climate emergency, which we've already done. Let's back up the urban forest plans because recommendation five is telling us to do that. And the final one I'll mention is recommendation six, to partner, support and develop relationships with library, community groups, neighbourhood houses, volunteering groups to, to deliver on outcomes. Um, you know, there's a push on for a, a better park orchards community house, a rebuild there, which could have a library. Uh, we probably need to build a new library given, um, given the quality of what we've got at Bulleen and the Pines in particular, which we rent off uh, private developers. So, you know, this is a recommendation which I'm going to use to say we need to do more on libraries. We've done all this investment in sporting facilities over the years, but we haven't done much on our social infrastructure. Uh, and I think these recommendations do point, particularly recommendation four and recommendation six, do make the case strongly um, for that. So that is a couple of thought bubbles. All of this will feed into our thinking and our debating. Um, thanks again to everyone who participated. I think it's been really valuable. We were forced into it by the new Local Government Act, um, but I think it's been a great initiative of the new Local Government Act to force every council in Victoria to do this. Uh, we've all learned a lot and uh, I think it's been a really worthwhile exercise and I'd like to thank the panellists for their contributions and undertake to do whatever I can along with the colleagues to re implement policies that reflect these priority recommendations over the balance of this four year term on council. Thank you, Councillor Stephen Main. Would anyone else like to speak? Councillor Goff. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and I congratulate all the panel members for all the time and, and thank them also for all the time that they've put in and all the officers and everybody involved in this process. Uh, this is really the first time in Manningham uh, that I have known that we've had a random panel selection to try and get the cross section of our community. Um, it's a difficult thing to do, and we've been able to do it, and I congratulate the office for finding out ways in which you can get the um, random sample of here. Often when we go out for public consultation, uh, we get skewed, in my opinion, we get skewed figures. We get self-interest, a lot of self-interest. So those people will write in a lot about an issue, but it ignores the great uh, wider community uh, and we don't actually get their opinions of, of what they're thinking. It's a silent resident that we don't get feedback from. Uh, but we do get from people that have got skin in the game, have got self-interest, they've got their own community club interest or whatever involved in funding or whatever into council. And so this process doesn't totally eliminate it, but it tries to eliminate a lot of that bias when we're going out to the community for what we're thinking. And the, and the differences in groups and age groups and, and people from different backgrounds are which is our community, uh, feeds in and we get the voice of the general community. And I think it's been a wonderful uh, experience and I think it's been a successful experience to get feedback from all of those people because often a lot of what is talked about in here is decided on by, I suppose, yeah, the councillors will have an input, but there will be some practice and policies and, and uh, officers that work at council that'll be feeding in their thoughts into what should occur in all these different situations. And when we go out in the past, and we've been out often, and it's not that it's wrong information, but we've often gone out and we've got lots of schools and kids will write in about what they think the future should be. And yes, you get the nice Sunday school answers that the teachers have gone through and told them the things that council do, and they're the things that you talk about and put in there. Um, we're getting better, I think, at getting better information to gear what we're saying because this has been the most important thing, getting a diverse, that diverse expression of opinion. And I hope you all piped up and said what you thought in all the different areas and not just sit back.
back on it because that was the important thing to get all of those varied points of view. So um, I'm really thankful that this process has uh, occurred, and uh, you know I think we are committed to doing it again when we're doing our next one, um, the next plan, and again going out again and getting a new random sample because I think that's the very important thing is the random samples that you get each time. But uh, for people that have been participating in it, uh, I think some of the knowledge of some of the issues that come to council, and let's face it, it all comes down to one thing. Government is all about one thing in the end, money and where it's spent. And that's where it comes down to what you can and can't fund and doing everything. And it's getting those priorities and getting the community feel and what our community are wanting in its majority. Because in everything, it comes down to whether it can be funded. And then it's the appetite of abilities of council to raise those funds to do those things. But really, thank you uh, for our directions. Thank you for the input and uh, look forward to uh, people feel free to work and, and talk and, and continue to give input into Manningham. Thank, and tonight was a great example. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor jo Goff. Councillor Chen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, Council is the closest level of government to the community. Therefore, we have both the opportunity and the responsibility to enable participatory democracy and community engagement. The panel of 40 community members are everyday people that help to shape our uh, Manhattan's future. Me members are required to weigh up information, data, competing values, deliberate it, and make recommendations for Council's major strategic documents. I know that it is never an easy task. It requires time, commitment, a lot of reading, discussion, and mostly uh, agree to disagree. I'm sure that members will agree that our collective efforts yielded a greater outcome for many Hong community. This was only possible through the members' commitment of time and effort, which is especially notable given their normal responsibilities. Council will keep our promises to give the 12 recommendations very, very serious consideration and report back to the community. Again, through the mayor, I would like to stand up. I wish to thank our officers for your great work. And I also wish to thank the community members for your passion and commitment for the great value of the community. Uh, community. So thank you so much and all the very best and keep sending your suggestions and we are listening. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Chen. <laughs> Technically not, but I will allow it, okay. Sam. Would you like... I'll, I'll, Again? Can I go? I'll, 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 yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yep. I'll, I'll, close, I'll, close, I'll close in a minute.
and some assistants to go and make, make a building based on their needs. In this case, you have that land is occupied. You have the better view of the, of the, the river, and also we have the you, you got the rent from the that. Thank, thank you for your suggestion, Sam. And it is actually on our forward agenda, consideration of that sort of thing that you're talking about in terms of are we making the most of our assets? So I appreciate your suggestion and I'm sure the councillors will remember it. Um, so I'd like to actually close and, uh, and really, on behalf of my fellow councillors, thank everyone who's here tonight for coming. Now, as Councillor Main said, out in the cold and the rain, um, and it does feel cold in here. I don't know if the air conditioning is working or not, but I'm, my legs are getting cold. Um, but I really appreciate your, um, we really appreciate the sacrifice that you've made, not just tonight, but over those four sessions. And, it, and you would have, I know, I've heard of stories of people missing out on birthday parties and stuff. And, and like, just that, yeah, just that commitment that you've made to, to your fellow citizens in um, in that in taking part in the panel, so we really do appreciate it. Um, for all the people who aren't here or are online, I thank you for your participation. Also for the for the people who are on the panel, and also for the people who actually enrolled, uh, who put in an application originally, because we had 450 people apply, which allowed us to get the diversity that we needed. And I think we were the standard, we are the standout council in terms of that response from the community. So we really do appreciate those people who applied and weren't successful. It was, it was a random process. I've had a few questions about that, but it was random. Um, and, uh, and it enabled us to get the, that diverse range of views, as we've heard from my fellow councillors. Uh, I'd also like to reiterate to our councillors, as we consider this motion, this is a promise, this is a promise that we made um, at the start of this process, that we would consider that we would give weight to and incorporate to the greatest extent possible in our strategic plans, the recommendations given by this community panel. And so by, by endorsing this motion tonight, that's what we are doing. We're reinforcing that promise. And I'd remind councillors that we have to need to now carry through with that promise in, in terms of the way we come about our plans. So this is not a, this is not a, a it's not just a formal ticking of the box as councillor Kleinert said. This is, this is a real commitment on our behalf to take what you've said to us and to, and to really um, take the intent of that, what we see as the intent of those recommendations and make it reality. So after, I'll just, for, for your benefit, we anticipate a response will be at our next, we'll have some sort of response to your recommendations, the council, the council panel sorry, the panel recommendations on the next council meeting, which is actually next week, uh, 27th of April. And after that, we will provide a full report advising how the recommendations have been addressed alongside our key strategic documents that, and the draft, um, that, that, that is the draft council plan. From there, we'll progress to potential actions from the council, for the council plan and the community vision 2040. So I'm certain that you'll be keen to understand how those, um, how your recommendations are implemented, or how they're uh, firstly taken up in the strategic documents and then implemented. <coughs> and I and I really appreciate the suggestion from the start, which you've heard uh, very much a, a strong support for, for us to review this every year, and and let's make sure that we are accountable to the panel for um, for your input. So, with that. Um, I'd just like to thank you, everyone, again, for your commitment, for, your, uh, for the great insight that we will receive as a result of this, um, these recommendations of, of your report. And, and I really, on behalf of my fellow councillors, would like to thank you. And if we could perhaps clap the... the uh, <laughs> Thank you very much. We do have another few items. Oh, sorry, before that, I Actually, keep forgetting. I've got to put the motion. I oh, know. Oh, it's all right. I was there. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Could we resume standing orders, councillors? Do I have a motion? Do I need I'll, a... I'll move to be and I have a councillor Goff moved and councillor Lang seconded. Do we resume standing orders? I'll put that motion. Those in favour? And that is carried. Councillors, <laughs> I will put now. We'll put the vote. Well, they're reviewing the standing orders. <laughs> we'll <laughs> yes, so so we will. I uh, will now put the motion. the motion to the floor, <laughs> which is to actually that we accept the uh, that we accept the panel's report. We sorry that we note as as per sorry as per the um, the motion that we note these items. I will put that motion. Those in favour, and I will call a division. And that, that's oh, it's unanimous actually, so I don't need to call a division. But um, if that could be noted that it is unanimous, thank you. So, as I was going to say, for our community panel members, we do have another few items to go. Um, I, I will adjourn the meeting uh, for a few minutes right now, and if you would like to um, leave or you'd like to chat to any of us councillors, you can do that. We'll, um, I, I propose that we resume in about five minutes. Thank you. Okay, councillors, if we could get you to um, sit. So, um, members of the community, you're welcome to stay for this part of the meeting. It'll be potentially 10 minutes to half an hour to 40 minutes. Sometimes these things take longer than we expect, but, but you never know. Okay, so all the councillors are present, I think. Thank you. Yes? No one's escaped. <laughs> no one's escaped. Um, so I will reopen the meeting. Thank you for people on Facebook for your patience. And we go to item six, which is the councillor gift policy. Do I have a mover? Councillor Goff. Mr Mayor, I move as on the paper. Thank you. And do I have a seconder? Councillor Lang, Councillor Goff. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I will be brief about this one. Uh, councils need to really come up to a, a decision on how they're going to handle gifts and things like that uh, that come to councillors in the course of their duties. And I know that the council officers have a policy within here when they are given gifts uh, in the course of their duty. And so this policy basically goes and outlines uh, to a certain extent of what we take as being hospitable uh, and we've, we've put a monetary amount on that. And then we've got an areas of where we do need to actually uh, write it in. And we do need to talk about any gift that has been given. There's a cumulative nature of the amount of gifts that people can receive um, within the Local Government Act. And that accumulation, it goes over quite a number of years. So something that might be a lunch for $30 every, every uh, couple of months uh, would add up to quite a considerable amount over a period of time. So those sorts of things would be noted. And it's all for that transparency uh, in uh, issues that are going on. So we've got a process, this policy outlines a process in which, a way in which we report, what we need to report, and, it is, and how it is reported and how it is kept into the future and for, and for those records. Uh, so congratulations on uh, the officers and councillors for coming to a decision about uh, this particular policy and it'll stand us in good stead and I think we've got it done in time. We, when was the, we, I think the, the, the date is pretty soon. Yeah, <laughs> okay. that's the meeting's night, I think. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Councillor Goff. Councillor Lang, would you like to speak to it? Would anyone like to speak to the motion? Sorry, would anyone like to speak against the motion? Would anyone like to speak for the motion? In that case, I will put the motion. Those in favour? And that is carried unanimously again. Thank you, councillors. Item seven, amendment to the MAV council motion. Do I have a mover? Councillor Main. Uh, Mr. May, I'd like to move an amended uh, motion, which I'll read out, that Council A endorse the amended MAV state council motion shown at attachment one, and B 
endorse an addition to the MAV State Council motion, which reads, quote, that the MAV State Council endorses the model of member councils exploring taking over the ownership and or management of not-for-profit clubs with poker machines in Victoria, preferably by way of clubs gifting land and buildings to councils for the ongoing benefit of the broader community. Point C, incorporate a copy of the amended motion and the rationale for the motion in the minutes as an attachment to this report. And D, submit the motion to the MAV by Friday, 23 April, 2021. Thank you. Do I have a seconder for the alternate motion or the amended motion, Councillor Lightbody? Councillor Main, would you like to speak to the motion? Oh, yes, sir. Thanks. Uh, actually, I would just, I'd like to, sorry, can I just pause there? If I would suggest amendment, would I do that now to the wording? Moved and seconded. We, is it, uh, so after after the move is spoken to it, so. Well, if I, I, I'd, so my suggestion is that thank you. I'd, I'd suggest that we remove with poker machines because it's not clear. As uh, I think the inten I know what I understand the intention, but um, it's possible that councils on taking over that um, land or uh, that land that it would. Uh, um, the councils don't necessarily have to stop the poker machines, if you know what I mean. That's one of the things, and I think, as a general principle, I think it wouldn't wouldn't um, wouldn't affect the motion. Mr. Mayor, I think that the removal of the word poker machines would fundamentally change the men the intention, and also not be then consistent with the background. So I'd rather proceed with um, what was distributed in the blues and read out with some additional tweaks from governance, which came through a few minutes ago, to make sure it's completely in order. So, oh, okay, so what are those tweaks? Oh, it was just, a, a, I, as I read it out, they were minor tweaks, but it was, right. it, was, uh, it was just done to make sure it's completely in order, given this is a special council meeting. Tell us what the tweaks were for the um, at B, it did say an endorse on, on the blues. It did say endorse an additional MAV State Council motion, which reads, and that was amended to endorse an addition to the MAV State Council motion, which reads. So oh, okay. Minor, an, minor. An sort addition of, to. Minor, yeah, minor. So yeah. So yeah. if it's okay with you, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to stick with the amended yeah, motion. Okay. As I'm, I'm, as I'm comfortable with that as long as you're comfortable that it does. Uh, it's, it doesn't water it down by not. Mm, as long as councils get the idea that you know the idea is to reduce pokey harm. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, in that case, Councillor Main, if you could speak to the motion. Yes. Uh, thanks, uh, Mr. Mayor. So, I guess the background of this is that um, a council resolved its MAV uh, motion at the previous council meeting, uh, but uh, by way of a an email that finished up in some junk folders, a final version um, that was submitted by email didn't finish up in the papers. So that was the, um, the initial reason for uh, this being on the agenda at tonight's special. And then in addition to that, after seeking some advice from governance yesterday about um, the motion that I read out earlier, I got the all clear for being able to move an amended motion to incorporate that. Um, so, so here we are tonight. So. In terms of the motion that I read out, um, uh, it's interesting that uh, Maroondah has recently taken over a, a failed pokies club, um, which failed due to COVID, was on council land and leased to the club, and council came in and bought the assets, bought the buildings and the fixtures and the poker, ma poker machines off the liquidator and, and got rid of the poker machines and turned it into a COVID testing centre initially. So, a really good neighbourly example of a council proactively um, coming into ownership of what was a not-for-profit pokies club and intervening and making sure that when there were other bidders who wanted to continue it as a pokies club, that they outbid them and got hold of the assets and they now have one less venue in Maroondah. Uh, if, you can sit, if you also consider uh, what we did with the Templestow RSL, which is a, um, a pokies free op, uh, operation but which was struggling financially with debt, uh, we came in and paid 1.25 million for the site 
a 20 year lease back uh, at 35,000 a year index to inflation and agreements in the lease requested by both parties that there never be poker machines at that RSL for the duration of the um, 20 year lease. So I've been working with um, a group of younger veterans who are working to get the RSL in Victoria to start focusing on veteran welfare rather than running 50 gambling dens with poker machines which often trigger a veteran's P PTSD and often addicts veterans who might have received a payout uh, and, then, and then think they're getting help at the RSL and end up being addicted and losing their payout. So to get the RSL focused on its core business, there's a large number of younger veterans centred around the Hawthorne RSL, the largest uh, RSL in Victoria for younger veterans, to get the RSL out of pokies and to get them into veteran welfare. Uh, and if councils can come in and do what we did, buy their RSL, get them out of debt, lease it back to them and then transition to a pokies free future focused on veteran welfare, that would be a good outcome. Then you've got the model in New South Wales and Queensland where you've got the RSL name being misused with venues that are called RSLs actually being effectively controlled by the poker machine industry. They're just regular registered clubs and they, they use the RSL name as a fig leaf to give them a social licence and maybe give them a room in the back hall. Um, so the Victorian RSL has a billion dollars of assets whereas the New South Wales and Queensland RSLs have far less than that, particularly New South Wales, because they've been abused and used by the poker machine industry. So if the RSL started writing to these clubs and saying, please hand over the assets to the real RSL, where does another not-for-profit, but we'd like the assets rather than just your members, or if the council came along and said, hey, we'd like these assets, and then we'll call it the RSL and give it to the RSL, it's a better outcome than mini casinos all over the suburbs and the regions, which is what you've got in New South Wales, which is what contributes to the 14 billion a year lost on poker machines in Australia, which is what contributes to the world's largest per capita losses. So there are many proposals that go up to MAV and ALGA about poker machines. This is a new one. This is, you know, everyone's always advocating for $1 maximum bets and changing hours and, and all sorts of stuff, but this is a new one. It's happened in our neighbour. It's happened here. It's a good model. If you don't ask, you don't get. I think the MAV is an appropriate forum for this, go, for this to go up to. The, M, the MAV will make a decision as to whether they think this is something to be encouraged. Heck, if a club wants to hand over assets to council, who are we to say no? If you don't ask, you don't get. So I think this is an interesting motion and I hope that colleagues tonight can, uh, can support it so it can go to be debated at the Melbourne Town Hall State Council meeting in a few weeks' time. Thank you, Councillor Main. Councillor Whitebody, you... I want to speak to the motion? Would anyone like, want to like to speak against the motion? Yes. Councillor Goff. Mr Mayor, I rise, rise to speak against the motion. I just want to make from the outset, I'm not a gambler, never have been, never will be, and uh, I have actually first-hand seen the danger of poker machines with some personal friends, and uh, I do understand uh, that situation. However, I do have problems with this motion. We're, we're sitting here talking about a model, a Manningham model of what we've done. And, and we need to really have sunlight on the process of how this motion gets here, how a previous motion of council got there. And we start back with the former council, Mr Mayor, the former council that actually was doing a deal with the RSL for a strategic piece of land within Manningham's area. We had struck all negotiations with them, okay, and we took that over. For some reason, it was resurrected to bring it up again for publicity purposes. It got a number of Herald Sun and Age articles and a whole things of, of personal, or maybe personal or whatever, but it allowed uh, people to talk about an issue that had already been done on a previous council and it brought it up and we passed a motion for you, Mr Mayor, to send letters on this wonderful thing that Manningham has done of stopping poker machines. A bit of sunlight goes on, I really need to go on this because now it's come back again. And the sunlight that needs to come onto it is that the Templestowe RSL have been misrepresented because it never has had poker machines, never was going to have poker machines, and even if it did want to have poker machines, it wasn't big enough to have poker machines. Now, 
in, 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 in an area for law. So even, with all of that, the, uh, the word RSL and poker machines is being dragged in to Manningham on a model that has been proposed, and I question the motive for this consistent bringing in of poker machines and whatever into a council for Manningham's uh, stamp of approval and putting out that Manningham is on about this under the guise of anti-gambling, where perhaps it has to do with uh, forwarding an agenda uh, that is not necessarily Manningham's, isn't going to help the gambling of, of, of people within Manningham, but is actually something more to be written about in, in, in whatever and to broadcast it. Now, I understand that the, it's correct. You know, this motion in the second part, Mr Mayor, that I want to speak about, has hit us minutes ago. There are councillors around this table that hadn't seen it before they sat down at the meeting tonight. Councillor, that's time. I'll, would you, um, could I'll ask someone, an extension. Could uh, Councillor Ten, you'd like to move for an extension? Sorry, um, do I have a seconder? Do I need a seconder for the extension of time? Councillor Diamante, I'll put that motion. Those in favour? Carried. Thanks, Mr Mayor. I question good governance. I question council responsibility. I question what we know about this and how it all works through. And yes, oh, it's just a motion going to the MAV or just to whatever, but it's going with our stamp that we, the other motions we have discussed, we've had time to discuss, we've talked about, we've refined them, we've done our work on them. This here is something that has been presented a few minutes ago. And the reason it's been able to get up and I'll ask in the future, Mr Mayor, that every motion that we put to the MAV as a separate motion, because it's got up under the guise of an amendment introducing a brand new motion about a brand new topic without being discussed by councillors in general. I did get a phone call, I have to say, from the proponent at about 4 o'clock or 4.30 this afternoon saying there's a motion. I was at work, work and, and uh, saying there's a motion and I did read it subsequent to that. Uh, coming in, uh, of, of it being there. The, the basis of the, the rationale on what it is written, I really don't know. But really what concerns me is it's starting to become habitual that Manningham's brand, legitimacy and uh, emphasis has been placed on a whole lot of issues that are not duly considered by the council. And I'm talking about not duly considered by us. Oh, that's a great idea. I'll vote for that. I don't like that. And I'm drawing the line, not necessarily on, on the actual motion, but the way in which this motion is being crafted in the background to come up to us, to be relevant to us, and, and, or, and, and the way in which it's been surprised on councillors. I'm extremely disappointed. Thanks. Thanks, Councillor. Are there any other speakers for the motion? Are there any other speakers to the motion at all? You can ask questions. Thank you. Councillor Lang, would you like to ask a question? Yes, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I am not against the intention of the... Um, can I, stand? I stand? Sure. Yeah. Um, I'm not against the intention of us looking into the damage that poker machines, um, the, the damage that they might affect our community. Um, if anything, I would hope that clubs that have poker machines do actually have an anti-gambling um, policy as well and are actively doing both together. Um, I, I'm, I'm just not sure of what and sorry, this might be my ignorance, but I'm not sure of what other clubs would operate if they're not RSLs, then what are other clubs that would operate with poker machines? So which other clubs are we talking I'll, about? Um, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll ask the, the, yeah, proponent, sorry, I'm the uh, mover sure. of the mo motion, Councillor. Thank you. Councillor Main, would you like to respond to that? Um, yes, well, there's, there's, uh, there's many hundreds of clubs across Australia 
um, that operate poker machines that aren't branded RSL. So in, in Manningham, there's the Veneto Club. Uh, there's the one I mentioned, I think it's called the Maroondah Club, which has just gone uh, broke. Uh, one of the biggest ones, I think, is the Mulgrave Country Club, which has uh, about $14 million a year in, in revenue they take from the community in poker machine uh, losses. Uh, across or many of the racing, racing clubs own poker machines, the big Greyhounds Hotel down there in Daniel Andrews' seat. So I think the, the racing industry extracts uh, about probably 150 million a year from gamblers in Victoria of the 900 million that comes out of, out of uh, registered clubs. The RSLs are only doing about 260 of the 900 million. So roughly sort of 70% of the 900 million coming from clubs is coming from the likes of the Veneto Club, the Mulgrave Country Club, the various racing industry clubs. Um, and in New South Wales, it's far worse where the, the figures I think are closer to three to four billion a year from thousands of clubs. Um, we just had a holiday on the New South Wales South Coast and the Tomican yeah. Sports Club. Councillor, yeah. you're, you're responding to a question? If yeah. You just, yeah. yeah, so, so there's, there's, there's hundreds you. of different types of clubs, yes. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to ask? Um, maybe. Um, <laughs> and in, in terms of clubs that have poker machines, do we have any advocacy for the way in which they operate and the way in which then that we um, would look at them having compulsory anti-gambling like support networks or is that, I don't know if that's so are our you, are jurisdiction. You, are you, sorry, are you talking about Manningham specifically now? Well, um, there's only one in Manningham now, no, I no, understand. No, is your question around the uh, yes. around the advocacy? Yes. Um, it's, it's around Manningham, yes. so I'll ask the CEO to respond to that question. Thank you for the question, um, Councillor. Obviously, um, Council have, have had positions in terms of gaming and gambling historically, but it's certainly something that um, you know, I would recommend that this Council um, considers outside this particular motion in terms of what your views are as a Council in terms of your advocacy efforts and the sorts of things that you would like to be pursuing in relation to uh, gambling harm, recognising that uh, poker machine uh, gambling is but one part of the impact of gambling uh, on the Manningham community. Thank you. Are there any other speakers, either for or against? Are you yes, Councillor Law Romain. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I'd like to speak... Could you just stand there? Okay, yes, of course. Yeah. Um, I'd just like to speak briefly for the motion. Um, I'd just say, like to say that I understand it's a bit of a messy process, but I think as local government representatives, it's our responsibility to help not only our local residents, but residents beyond that. And if we've had the opportunity to create positive change, there's no reason not to cycle that positive change and try to extend that positive change to other people. And I just, I mean, pokies harm is a big issue in Australia. Um, I, it really hits home, not hits home, but I really think about people escaping domestic violence and with mental health issues and like veterans with PTSD, how this is just escapism for them. And so if my perspectives perspective is that if we have the opportunity to stop that, the procedural argument that this is now role is just kind of doing nothing and is just isn't just isn't helping anyone and just anti anti productive. So that's why I'd say that I support this motion because I'm for positive change and anything we can do in that um, space. Thank you, Councillor Laura May. Are there any other speakers against the motion? For the motion? Can I ask a question, Mr. Councillor Chen. I heard a lot about uh, gambling harm. And my question is uh, because uh, I'm not a person who gambles, even purchase a lo uh, test lotto ticket. I, have I haven't done that before. I don't know how to play and uh, how to purchase a lotto ticket. But I'm just wondering. We, I have heard a lot about gambling, and is it a legitimate activity in Victoria about poco, a, po, a, po, a poker machine? I don't even pronounce it properly. Poker machine, yeah. Poker, poker machine or poker machine, yes. Is it a legitimate activity? If it is not, that's fine. So we don't have that issue. If it is legitimate, do we, should we look 
on a higher level just to advocate the state government, just to say that it is not longer legitimate, get rid of those activities altogether. <coughs> I, I'm not sure that whether we just put, it's a democratic society, and I know that, and uh, all the motions here are good motions with good intention, but I have heard uh, our uh, fellow council, uh, my fellow councillors speak against the motion. I actually agree with him where he's coming from because it is nearly to me it's a last minute motion. I, I personally would rather prefer time to consider. And also I'm not quite sure about gifting land and buildings, presumably from, a, from my limited knowledge. And that is crown land and council's assets, but it's not clear here. So I'm in a dilemma. So thank you. So in, so in response to your question regarding the legitimacy, of, they are, my understanding is they are legitimate. Um, I'm happy to take advice from the CEO. Um, and in terms of the question of advocating to the state government, I might believe the CEO responded to that as a as a as a potential future, as if we agree as councillors in a, in the future, as councillors, to a motion of that to that effect, um, uh, and the rest I'll take as a comment regarding uh, regarding the the motion at hand. Regarding the wording, because it's nothing to say about we're gifting land. It's a gifting what land? The intention, I believe, is is that it would be for clubs that own their land, they would be gifting it to the council or to the crown um, to be managed by council. But it's subject to a lot of interpretation. That's why I, I I'm not quite sure. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I, will, I would I would, I would yeah. clarify. This is a motion for the MAV to consider, and um, the MAV will, I'm sure. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, can, um, no, I, th I think there's. Um, I'll give you a moment to. Um, you can respond. I'll take that as an argument against, if you like, and you, and you can respond because I don't think there's anyone else would like to speak. The motion. Sorry, councillor. Can I just confirm, councillor Diamante? Thank you. There's, it's a clarification. Um, a MAV motion's due by this Friday, so they. So we. Yes. The reason for. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is technically due prior. I think um, it's because of because we it was an amendment to the motion that we are now okay. considering. This. Councillor, would anyone else like to speak uh, to the motion? I'll take that as no. And Councillor Main, would you like to close, please? Yeah, so just picking up on some of the points raised during the discussion. If you could just stand. You? Yeah, the first one on, um, on legitimacy. Um, so counts, uh, poker machines are legal in pubs and clubs in all Australian states and territories except for Western Australia, where they are illegal. Um, they're only legal in about 12 countries around the world to have poker machines in pubs and clubs. They're legal in many more casinos, but to have them outside of casinos in regular sporting clubs and pubs and clubs there are only 12 countries in the world that have thought that's appropriate. Um, and the fact that there's 900 currently unutilised club licences of the 13,500 that the sector is allowed shows how they are actually becoming a bit of a pariah and they can't even find clubs willing to take up legal licences that are available for use right away. Um, I'd like to pick up on a couple of comments made by my colleague, uh, Councillor Goff, on process, and I think they are legitimate points. And just for his background, um, I first discussed the idea of a motion like this with the Mayor on Thursday last week. Um, at 6.32 last night, having socialised it with the officers, I received an email saying that it was appropriate to put it up as an amendment at a special council meeting. Um, and then at 12... 13 today, I emailed all councillors with the full text of the motion and the background of the motion and anticipating uh, your position, Councillor Goff, in light of the position with the 8-1 vote you took in December, I called you at around 4 o'clock asking if you'd seen it and if you wanted to discuss it and that sort of stuff. So I don't think it's really fair to say this was a five minutes to midnight, last minute thing. I did try. We were up against the clock vis-a-vis -vis Friday. I could have called a special council meeting for... Friday morning with three councillors, 
that that would be a very inefficient use of council time and I thought it would be easier to go with this and I anticipated that hopefully there would be numerical support for, um, for the proposal. So um, just to clarify the intention of the, of the, of the motion, it is to ask... Two, two minutes up. Yeah, sorry. Well, Councillor, your time's up. OK, look, actually, I'll call, I'll call it quits. Yeah, thank you. Oh, no, you um, I'm not closing. I don't think you can extend the time. No. So, councillors, I will therefore put that motion. Those in favour? Those against? And that is carried. Thank you, councillors. And with that, I think that's the end of the meeting. So thank you for your patience for those in the public gallery.